Purina, you guys feed kitties and puppies and don't do anything horrible, right? We make food for the whole farm. Horses, puppies, kitties, piggies, bunnies, monkeys. We also make human food for, you know, our cult members. When did monkeys become farm at Wait, who's the human food for? The cult members? Yeah, they followed Ralstonism. Ralstonism. Wellness, eugenics, castration, and dog food. They have all the bases covered. So let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Jax, and this is Morbidly Macabre, the show where I talk about morbid history, true crime, cryptids, and other spooky topics that might catch my interest. Thank you to Youth Pastor Ryan for today's video topic. When I saw his TikTok, I was enthralled. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider hitting the like button at the bottom of the screen. And if you want to see more from me on this channel, please consider hitting the subscribe and the bell notification icon so you get notifications every time I post a new video. If you want to see more from me in an unscripted setting, I do stream over on Twitch five to six days a week at Jax Marie Gaming. All right, now let's get back to the video. So let's start with the five questions. The who, what, where, when, and why. Who founded Ralstonism? His name was Webster Edgar Lee. Edgar Lee was born in Massachusetts in 1852, and he died in 1926. He attended at law school and practiced law before moving to Ralston Heights in New Jersey for eight months out of the year, which is where his new age group, also known as a cult, really started. He published books under the name Edmund Shaftesbury and wrote over 100 books on the topics of self-help and utopias. So what is Ralstonism? Ralstonism is an acronym for Regime, Activity, Light, Strength, temperature, oxygen, and nature. On the surface, it doesn't seem that bad. Work out regularly, get plenty of sunlight, good diet, and fresh air. So far, so good, right? Then you get to the dietary restrictions. Some highlights of this dietary restriction are foods that do not digest together, generate a deadly poison in the body. Another one is combined perfection of food and digestion is found in one food meals. Edgar Lee believed that eating food that contains the 14 nature elements or combinations of are the life-building foods. So what are these 14 building elements? And what are those life-building foods that he talks so much about in his books? On page 94 and 95 in The Book of Star Ralstonism, which is the general membership book, he discusses that by eating food that contains elements that are found in the body, like carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, etc., that were once living and growing and developing, like a grain or rice, and consuming that food, you absorb the vitality and the health. You need minerals, nitrogens, fibers, carbons, and phosphorus for vitality. And if you achieve vitality, you achieve magnetism, which gives you the control over other people's thoughts. Did I lose you? Yeah, so part of why proper diet and physical exercise is so important to Ralstonism is so you can control others through your magnetism. So magnetism, or what Edgar Lee said was somebody's magnetism, is really their energy and their charisma. But young men were advised to have this magnetism and this charisma and bed women old enough to be their mothers and grandmothers, and then marry somebody a lot younger than them. Edgar Lee actually married once, and then he married again when he was 42 to an 18-year-old because of his magnetism. And by studying his assorted wisdom and magnetism, um, it would ultimately give you the power to control others' thoughts and maybe be immortal. Who knows? You also must walk only on the balls of your feet, and any exercises that you did must be in smooth, graceful curves and arcs. So no doing the robot, you must do the robot in curves and arcs. Sudden stops and starts and sharp movements can cause your vital force to leak out of you. And if you lose your vital force, you lose your life. His books really give you instructions for everything, how to bathe, how to gesture, how to sleep, how to talk, walk, stand, have sex, the vital life force and vitality were so important to Ralstonism 
Even his estate that he purchased in New Jersey, Ralston Heights, followed his idea of the sudden stops and straight lines will make you lose life force, so his walking paths were curved. He also had his own language called the Adam Man Tongue. He wanted it to become a universal language. Interesting read, interesting book. So where did Purina come in? Ralston believed that having a whole grain breakfast was a great breakfast, and it really is. And William Danforth, the founder of Purina, wanted to get some paid endorsement from Edgar Lee because Ralstonism was so huge at the time. Ralston wheat cereal went on sale in 1898 and was so successful. And it was so successful that William Danforth partnered with Edgar Lee and created the Ralston Purina Company. While Edgar Lee was really only with the company to make the cereal, he didn't really participate in the dog food or anything else. He also advised his followers to not eat that cereal. On page 167 of the Book of Star that I, that I mentioned earlier, he specifically states, Do not buy any food or any goods bearing the name Ralston, contrary to our latest bulletins. We endorse everything that is pure, wholesome, honest, and and meritorious. But do not wish the word Ralston to be used in any connection apart from our club, its literature, and its educational interest. So do not buy the Ralston food. Make your own. So I looked at the publication date of this book because I was curious. The Purina Ralston cereal was made in 1898, and this was published in 1900, two years after that cereal went on sale. He told his followers to buy their own wheat and make it from scratch, make their own cereal from scratch. Don't buy it from the store. Given what I have learned about Edgar Lee in my research, I almost wonder if the Ralston Purina Company was a way for him to get more financial interest and to get more money to support his cult and the founding of his cult. Uh, he was building a following and what he had hoped to build was a congregation of people. His estate that he purchased, and I mentioned this previously, Ralston Heights, was so he could build a compound. People could eat, sleep, and breathe Ralstonism while he gave lectures like to a congregation. Thankfully, that didn't come to pass and he actually did not pass away in Ralston Heights, but he did die before his cult could grow to that severity. But what about that eugenics and castration that I mentioned at the beginning? Well, all of Edgar Lee's teachings were designed for everyone but only if you're white. Edgar Lee believed that he was founding a new race, a superior race that was built on Caucasians. He wanted to improve humans using eugenics and selective breeding. So he wanted to castrate all non-white males at birth and use selective breeding to create the perfect human. A main idea of Ralstonism is that this new race would be perfect and superior. They wouldn't get sick and they would live to be a hundred years old. But Ralston's congregation wouldn't come to be for a variety of reasons. The land was expensive and even though he had a really rich clientele, they didn't really want to move there. And in his attempt to befriend the townspeople and the locals at a nearby town, he had a water tank installed on his property for the town of Hopewell in New Jersey. And the water that came from that water tank was actually polluted and contaminated and foul because of a crack in the water tank. And due to this, he was forced out of town and forced to move from his property. His manor remains though, Ralston Manor, is used for art and events and it's called the castle in New Jersey. Thanks to Janet Six who stayed at the castle and actually brought Ralstonism and Webster Edgar Lee back to the mainstream. Um, she really brought the history back in her thesis for her doctorate, and she is now a doctor in anthropology and is the first hired archaeologist in Maui, Hawaii. So a huge thank you to her for bringing Ralstonism to us so we can also experience this. <laughs> so eat your elements, walk in circles, and only eat one food meals. And 
thank you, Dr. Janet Six, for taking this once forgotten man and reminding us all that Kellogg's wasn't the only kooky cereal company. Well, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember, if you liked today's video, please consider hitting the like button at the bottom of the screen. And if you want to see more from me, please consider hitting the subscribe and the bell icon for notifications so you get notified every time I post a new video. And if you want to see more from me in an unscripted setting, I am over on Twitch at Jacks Marie Gaming. Thank you all so much for joining me, and as always, stay curious. Goodbye.